The dilemma over Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal's forthcoming visits to the United Nations General Assembly in New York and China has now been over. The dates for these two visits had earlier clashed. However, following a request from Nepal, the UN headquarters has agreed to reschedule Premier Dahal's address to the UN General Assembly, which has facilitated the Prime Minister to address the UN summit on 21st of September and fly to China to attend the opening ceremony of the Asian Games in Hangzhou on 23rd of September. Good evening, I'm Avide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. One person killed and five others go missing in floods and landslides. At least 300 houses inundated in Bardia. Five highways disrupted, domestic flights also affected. Demands for high-level commission concerning gold smuggling raised in Nepali Congress as well. CPN Yamel demands resignation of the Prime Minister and the Ministers for Home and Finance. The death toll in Maui Island wildfires in the U.S. climbs to 93. Authorities say death count could rise further, dead bodies being identified. And the National Women Volleyball Team upbeat ahead of their debut at the Asian Games. Target wins against higher-ranked nations. Five people have gone missing and more than 400 houses have been inundated in Bardia due to the incessant rainfall from early this morning. According to DSP at the District Police Office Bardia, Hikmat Bahadur Bohra, 30-year-old Balkrishna Tharu of Guleria 12 and 23-year-old Akshay Tharu of Guleria 8 have gone missing after they were swept away by Babai River. DSP Bohara also informed that two more people were swept away by Babai River when they were collecting firewood. 43 houses in Bardia's Auri, Bhagatpur and Dudia villages of Bar Bardia Municipality 8 have been inundated due to the incessant rainfall from early this morning. Likewise, 60 houses in Reshampur of Bansgari Municipality 8 and 120 houses in Ward No. 9 of the same municipality have also been inundated. Meanwhile, more than 100 houses have been inundated in villages including Prayagpurang and Kalapur in Gularia Municipality 5 after a dam collapsed. The flood from Babai River also entered the settlements in Ward Numbers 8 and 11 of Gularia. Meanwhile, traffic has been halted due to the landslide at Charukola along the Bardia Bansgari Municipality 1 Ratna Highway that connects Surkhet. The water level of the Narani River is nearing the danger level due to incessant rainfall. The flow of water in the river at Gandak Dam in East Nolparasi has been measured at 240,000 cusec. Officer at the Gandak Barrage, Amit Kharga, informed that 300,000 cusec is considered the danger mark. According to Chief District Officer of East Noval Parasi, Kalpana Shrestha, all the security units in the district have been put on standby considering the possible danger as the water level on the Narani River is increasing and rain hasn't stopped. The Weather Forecasting Division has said that the continuous downpour in the past 48 hours will continue till tomorrow evening. The department has forecast heavy rains in Karnali, Sudurpashtim, Koshi, Bagmati, Gandaki and Lumini provinces tonight. The rainfall has been measured at 165 millimeters in the past 12 hours. The Weather Forecasting Division has also alerted people living near banks of the rivers Narani, Karnali, Bagmati, East and West Rapti, Babai, Mahakali and their tribunals to remain vigilant as water level is expected to cross the danger zone. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Authority has informed that at least nine people have been killed in the past week in different incidents of floods and landslides across the country. According to the Department of Roads, five major highways have been disrupted due to rains and landslides, while 41 highways are operating one-way traffic. Meanwhile, one person was killed by landslide in Dolkas Tinpate of Biguru Municipality 7. 12-year-old Pasang Sherpa of Biguru Municipality 7 was killed by the landslide in a forest near Magar village at around noon today. 
According to Ward Chairperson Dilbadur Sresta, Pasang's father, Nim Dorje, who accompanied him to the jungle, is still missing. Ward Chairperson Sresta informed that police and local residents are in search of the missing. Domestic flights have been affected today due to bad weather. The flights to Bharatpur, Pokhara and Sudket were affected from early this morning. The Tribune International Airport Office informed that passengers of domestic flights returned home after their flights were cancelled. Spokesperson for the Tribune International Airport Office, Subhas Cha, informed that the airline companies had cancelled the morning flights. Cha himself had to wait at Bharatpur Airport due to delay in flight. The office also informed that two flights from China to Kathmandu from Sichuan Airlines and Air China were also cancelled due to adverse weather conditions. CPN Mao Center has recalled General Administration Minister Aman Lal Modi from the government. The meeting of the office bearers of CPN Mao Center held at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balwatar today decided to call back Minister Modi from the government and hand the responsibility of the Ministry of General Administration to Janmat Party. Janmat Party has handed Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal the name of Anita Devi Shah to replace Modi as the General Administration Minister. The office of the president has informed that Shah's oath-taking ceremony is scheduled for 10 a.m. tomorrow. Although Janmat Party opted out of the Daha-led government on 31st of March earlier this year, it had not withdrawn its support extended to the government. Shah, who has been proposed by Janmat Party to become minister, is a member of the House of Representatives through proportional representation. Meanwhile, CPN Maoist Center parliamentarian Modi, who was recalled from the government, was appointed as the General Administration Minister on 17th of January earlier this year. He was elected from Morong 4 from the direct category. This will be the 12th occasion that Premier Dahal reshuffled his cabinet since becoming Prime Minister almost eight months ago. CPNUML Chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli has demanded the resignation of the Prime Minister along with the Home Minister and the Finance Minister, citing their accountability in the recent gold smuggling scandal. Chairperson Oli stated that his party would obstruct the meeting of the House of Representatives until a high-level investigating commission was formed. Speaking at a press conference held at the CPNUML headquarters in the capital's Chiasol today, Oli said that the gold smuggling scam was not possible without the involvement of the government. Oli said that it would be welcome for the Prime Minister to resign amid such a scandal and questioned why the Home Minister and Finance Minister have not resigned. Chairperson Oli blamed the ruling coalition parties for the obstruction of the House of, Rep House of Representatives and accused them of not letting the opposition speak. He accused the ruling coalition of trying to suppress the voices raised against corruption and defended Nepali Congress lawmaker Sunil Sharma, who was arrested on Thursday in connection with the fake academic certificate and was released a day later. As unverified media reports have circulated, CPNUML Chair Oli had taken personal initiative to release NC lawmaker Sharma. Finance Minister and Nepali Congress spokesperson Prakash Sharan Mahat has claimed that if his involvement in the 100 kg gold scam was proved in any terms, he was ready to resign. Minister Mahat has said that his name has been intentionally taken in the case to defame him. Minister Mahat, while addressing the meeting of the parliamentary party today, viewed that he has been attacked from the party, session and the street. During the meeting, leader Shekhar Koirala said that it was necessary to form the high-level commission as demanded by the main opposition in connection with the gold scam to free Nepal from the clutches of gold smugglers. Leader Koirala also said that Nepal was being used as a safe transit to smuggle gold to India. Emerging out of the meeting, the Nepali Congress leaders informed that the meeting dwelt on contemporary issues, including the continued disruption of the parliament by the opposition parties. Prior to this, the parliamentary party meeting had raised the issue of what they called guided democracy as leaders of Nepali Congress were arrested by the government. Even as leaders of Nepali Congress have been arrested under various criminal charges, the party has not initiated any action towards them. In our public voice segment, today we have asked people in several provinces what should be done to end obstructions at the parliament that have been carried out time and again. 
Let's take a look at what they have to say. निश्चित एजेंडा में निश्चित निर्णय करें अगड़ी बढ़ु जनता को मुद्दा में केन्द्रित रहकर एकजुट भर ये बेला अगड़ी बढ़े पे संसद को अवरोध चाहे अंत्य कर सकता संसद को गतिरोध हटा का लगी संसदीय मर्यादा कायम राख् पर्च सद विरोध कर संसद चलने पर दिवे जब समय लाभ को राजनीति हावी भैर तब समय यहां खाल गतिरोध अवरोधर भैर सब दल मिले अगर बढ़ु वहाँ पुरानों भाई नया सोच आ सकता छे वहाँ में परिपक्वता भैन जेन्यून मुद्दा में बहस करने अलग जेन्यून तरीका बहस करने भाई यो गतिरोध अंत्य हो बारम्बार अवरोध कर नपाने खाले कानून बना ठीक जनता को मुद्दा बोलने ठा हो संसद प्रतिपक्ष सरकार ने खेलने ठा बना हो निगात निकाल ये कुरो ठीक भैन ये कुरो ठीक भाई जो ठेट डिशीजन हो ठेट डिशीजन करा संसद खोला पर्च It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you, why has the trend of parties saving their leaders involved in controversies increased? 52% voted for A, lack of ethics, 28% voted for B, ignoring good governance, and 20% voted for C, protecting their leaders. Here's today's question. What could be the reason for the Prime Minister's employment program not gaining desired results? Your options are A, misuse of budget, B, lack of long-term planning, and C, ploy to feed cadres. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update. Ninety-three people have been confirmed dead in the Maui fire that raised the historic town of Lahaina in Hawaii, marking the most deadly U.S. fire in a century. Hawaii Governor Josh Green warned the number of victims could rise significantly as forensic work continues to identify the victims. Hundreds remain unaccounted for while hundreds of others fill shelters across Maui after fleeing the flames. While the wildfires are now largely under control, efforts to fully extinguish them are continuing in parts of the island, including around Lahaina, which has been devastated. Authorities have focused efforts on combing through what is left of the coastal area of the island using sniffer dogs trained to detect bodies to look for signs of corpses under the rubble. So far, they have covered only 3% of the search area. In the emergency shelter at Maui's War Memorial Complex yesterday, hundreds of evacuees continued to gather, receiving food, toiletries and medical aid from a still-growing number of volunteers. It is thought that more than 2,000 buildings have been damaged or destroyed since the fires broke out. The majority of these were homes in the Lahaina area. The main road to Lahaina, the Honoa Pilani Highway, was briefly reopened to residents yesterday before quickly being closed again. The cost of rebuilding Maui has been estimated at $5.5 billion according to the Pacific Disaster Center and FEMA, which is coordinating the relief effort to Hawaii from Washington. Sports News. The National Women Volleyball Team is making its debut at the upcoming Asian Games. The team is currently undergoing rigorous training at the Three Parishers Covered Hall. Chief Coach John DeBrandt and Assistant Coach Jagdish Patta are not only preparing the players physically, but the players are also given mental strength. The players are training from 9 in the morning till 6 in the evening. The players are quite upbeat even as this is going to be their first participation at the Asiad. Pitted in Group C alongside South Korea and Vietnam, the matches seem quite challenging for the Nepal national team. The medal could be a distant dream at this level, however, the team at least wants to improve the rankings. The coaches, in the meantime, are also trying to better prepare the players at mental level. The players are also taken for hiking and go through spells of meditation to make them mentally tougher and improve level of concentration. Team Nepal will also be boosted by the return of Pratibha Mali, who was out of the national team for quite long due to injury. 
The team at the moment looks well balanced with the presence of Saraswati Chaudhari, Usha Bhandari, Niruta Thagunna and Kamana Bishta among others. Despite the mandatory requirement of 14 players, the Volleyball Association has only kept 12 players in the training camp due to lack of fund. Team Nepal has also planned a series against India ahead of the Asiad, but it has not been finalized. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.